Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is based on Ravel's Hawaiian Charger Funny Car. Back in the early 70s, Roland Long had a stable of these Hawaiian Chargers, and he raced them all over the countries with great success. This kit is a 1 16th scale skill level 3 kit for the advanced builder, and contains 154 parts. It's molded in white, clear, and chrome, and has vinyl tires, and includes vinyl tubing and wires for engine detailing. This kit has seen a few different box art designs, and had multiple reissues. But this is a 100% reissue, and although the original kit has had most, almost no changes in any of the releases, beside from different de decals. The copyright stamp on the chassis reads 1988, and the decals read 2014. So this is still based on the original molds. But we've seen this as the Shy Town Hustler, Gene Snow and other versions of the Hawaiian. And based on the research, I couldn't find a real car that used exactly these graphics. So I, I think it's a bit of a mismatch, but I think it still makes a great looking presentation. Now the motor is very detailed and includes tubing and wiring. And the chassis is uh, designed well and fits together nicely. The body is showing its age with some mold lines, but it's solid and straight even in 1 16th scale. The decals look great, and they're new uh, from Ravel, these top quality decals that they have. Uh, I'd call it a phantom set, but the Ravel took a uh, collected design of the different cars to create it, and it still looks terrific. The release has a centerline style rims and American Racing style rims, but only American racing rims here fit the tires well. The tires are unbranded, but research shows that uh, quite often uh, they were run with black walled tires, so this could be considered correct too. Overall, when finished, your kit will be about 12 inches long, 4 and 3 16 inches wide, and 3 and a quarter inches high. Here's my version of the open box review. Some reviewers have been known to pick up each piece or tree and talk about it for 5 or 10 minutes, but it's not really very helpful showing you how to put the model together. So here's my open box review in 15 seconds. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Like most kits, Construction begins with the motor, so pull these parts out of the kit, and while the instructions will have you paint the main block unit black, our reference photos that I've seen are all different kinds of metals uh, colors, so uh, the valve covers are also shown in reference photos as being black and chrome and aluminum on different cars, so based on my references there was really no standard, so you can kind of choose what you'd like to paint this one. Uh, first assemble the block the heads and the timing cover. I painted my motor block aluminum, then paint the intake take and uh, oil pan gold, and assemble the top pulley and paint it and the lower pulley steel. The fuel pump is aluminum with some blue and red connections, and the oil line union is aluminum with a blue connector. Uh, I painted the valve covers black by stripping the chrome off by soaking them in some bleach, and then rinsing it off. Uh, now, decal number 30 is optional, and it goes on the valve covers. The real cars have them, and some of them don't. So here's the motor assembly at this point. And as you can see, this slightly larger scale lends itself to some really outstanding looking detail. Now we're going to attach the tubing and, and some of the wiring to the uh, motor. But I use a trick here sometimes to make sure that I've got a good uh, place to glue the wires and tubes and that is to take a, a straight pin uh, cut off the nibs uh, that are on the molding uh, flush and then heat the pin up and, and stick it into that place where the uh, nibs were so that I can have a good place to glue and mount the actual tubes. Now grab these parts 
and use the template for cutting the tubing and the wires for the motor. Using the black tubing you'll cut out the small lengths quarter inch long for the boots. Now paint the distributor shaft silver uh, with the distributor being silver with a tan cap and paint the oil line silver with a steel block. The oil manifold is silver uh, with red connections. And I recommend attaching the, man the uh, oil lines in place prior to assembly because it's tight fit and you can damage the small parts if you try to force them on when they're already in position. So as with the oil lines, attach the tubing to the distributor cap prior to assembly. Now tube A attaches from the oil line union to the oil manifold on the side uh, with a single connector and tube B inserts on the oil manifold bottom connector on the opposite side and tube C on the top connector. The black tubing goes on the nine pins on the distributor cap and in the eight holes in the valve covers. Now attach the oil caps and breathers to the valve covers. Attach the distributor to the distributor shaft and that attaches behind the top pulley. Then attach the oil lines to the block and the manifold to the oil line and the block. The loose oil tubing will later attach to filters in assembly further on. Here's what uh, you'll see at this stage of the motor build and you can set this aside for the glue to cure uh, before going on. Now slip some of the short black tubing onto the wires uh, for your plug boots and use some super glue to uh, follow the wiring diagram here and glue the um, spark plug wires into the corresponding places on the motor. Now pull the parts out of the kit to uh, construct the blower parts and you'll follow the template provided to cut the lengths of gray tubing. Now uh, assemble the blower unit front, back, middle, and the pulley and paint the unit steel. Then paint both of the fuel rails silver uh, with a steel collector box and paint the butterfly red, paint the fuel valve uh, silver with blue connectors and paint the throttle linkage silver. Now insert the butterfly into the bottom snorkel and but don't glue it. Attach the top of the snorkel and attach the blower fuel lines to the bottom of the snorkel then attach the snorkel to the blower unit. Now attach uh, tube A, the gray one, to the top uh, rear connector of the fuel valve and gray tube B to the bottom rear connector. Then attach the fuel valve to the blower and the snorkel. Attach the loose end of tube A to the blower fuel line box. Then attach the throttle linkage to the snorkel and the fuel valve. Add decal number 29 on each side of the blower. And on the motor attach the main fuel line to the intake. Then attach the blower unit to the intake with super glue and attach tube B to the main fuel line box. Now this is what the completed uh, snorkel unit would look like. Uh, now if this was a contest entry you'd want to dechrome the snorkel and then uh, fix and repair the uh, horizontal uh, line there where the two halves come together and then use some chrome paint or painted uh, color. But uh, decal 31 goes on both sides of the snorkel. And also uh, the instructions have you look for decal 33 which you won't find on this decal sheet so don't bother trying to apply that to the butterflies. Get out these final parts for the uh, motor and then use the black tube and the template provided and cut the tubing. Uh, to length. Now painting, um, we'll, we'll start with by uh, painting the belt uh, retainer of steel and the headers are flat black. Decal 5 goes on the belt and uh, stretch the belt over the lower pulley, pulley and the blower pulley going around the middle pulley and then attach the belt retainer to the blower. Attach tube B to the lower connector on the water valve and to the lower connector on the fuel valve. Connect tube C to the upper fuel valve connector and upper water valve connector. Then attach the bell housing to the motor's rear. Attach the headers to the heads and on the black tubes to the pin on the header and the coolant caps on both sides. Gather up these parts for the frame and I thought it would be best to assemble the frame uh, before paint so that uh, it has good strength and you can align it properly. 
So paint uh, to paint it and assemble, assemble it later would cause damage to the paint. So pick a side rail and attach the head cage in place. And don't glue the uppermost mounts yet, but then attach the front and rear cross members to the frame. Uh, with the opposite side rail, do all the attachment points and glue the frame together, making sure that it's straight. Uh, attach the frame front into place and attach the seat brace into place. The head cage area needs a little um, finesse to make it fit right. Um, there was a little warp in the top rails that wouldn't let them meet in the proper place, so I taped around the unit's uh, tubes and used some super glue to glue the attachment points. Now glue the top head cage rails to the top bar. So here's the completed frame and it's ready to paint, but go over the attachment points and uh, smooth anything out in any rough spots or over glue. And then the frame rails also have a heavy parting lines that should be removed for a contest build prior to assembly. Now paint the frame unit metallic blue and paint the seat shell outside aluminum and the inside black. Then apply decals 25, 26, and 27 to the seat. Here's what your frame looks like from overhead. Now the seat tub sits in the frame, but it's not glued in yet. So after painting, you can slide it in from the front carefully, and it'll just sit there in place. Then attach the chrome pedal to the left frame rail, and the fuel shut off to the left frame rail. Now stage these parts for the rear suspension and the fuel tank. Now cut a length of the black tubing about four and three quarter inches and paint the fuel cell top and bottom flat black. And paint the oil filters orange and the, wheelie, uh, the wheels on the wheelie bars are black. And then assemble the rear differential and back halves and attach it to the frame. Attach the wheelie bars to the frame. Insert the tube from the inside of the fuel cell in the holes on the top and pull it all the way to equal length and then attach the fuel cell bottom to the top and attach that unit to the frame. Attach the fuel cap to the fuel cell and attach both filters to the filter mount and attach that to the frame. This is uh, a look at the positioning for uh, the rear differential. Now here you can see the oil filters in place with the fuel cell and the hose that's routed through there. Now get out the parts uh, needed to mount the motor and paint the safety blanket flat black and paint the clutch pedal steel. Then assemble the drive shaft and assemble the safety blanket and attach the drive shaft to the safety blanket and then attach the shift linkage to that. Attach the clutch pedal to the bell housing and insert the finished drive shaft unit into the frame attaching it to the differential and into the motor in place connecting the safety blanket to the bell housing. Now attach the loose gray tubes uh, from the motor to the top of the oil filter mount. About that drive shaft for contest builders, um, you'll probably want to strip the chrome off of that and then uh, clean up the sprue attachments and the uh, parting lines where the two halves go together. Um, you, you can't see it on a shelf build, but if in competition, they'll, they'll, they'll see it. Now you can see what this awesome looking motor is uh, starting to look like in your frame. And you might want to go through the chassis, check all the connections. And um, in my case, I had to add a little super glue to some of the connections uh, because the, um, the hosing and the tubing actually put a little bit of stress on some of those joints. Here are the parts needed for the front suspension. And I can't sugarcoat it. This is going to take patience. Um, you'll have to scrape glue carefully from any of the contact points and use super glue to put it together. Now, I start with the axle and attach the spindles and the spindle retainers into place. And I clamp that assembly with some clothespin uh, and let the super glue set. Then I attach the tie rod mounts with some super glue and inserted the tie rod and super glued the retainer to the tie rod pin. Then I set, the, uh, I set that aside to cure. Now super glue the axle mounts to the frame and insert the radius rods into the frame. I used some testers for that because I wanted to be able to adjust it as they were drying to make sure they dried in proper position. Now set the axle unit in place and attach the radius rods to the axle and super glue the retainer onto the pin. 
Now super glue the axle to the axle mounts. Even when assembled carefully and with super glue, this is still going to be a fragile uh, assembly. So make sure you don't put any pressure on it or accidentally grab onto it. These are the steering components we need for the next stage of assembly. And this is also delicate, so patience and super glue are your best friends. Uh, paint both throttle linkage parts steel. And I did this in two assemblies. Uh, the steering linkage is assembled first. So attach the two linkage bars and super glue the retainer onto the pin. Attach the pitman arm to the linkage and the super glue to the and super glue the retainer on. Then attach uh, the linkage to the spindle and super glue the retainer there. Now run uh, the assembly under the header against the frame attaching the U-bolt to the frame over the linkage. Insert the steering gear shaft and let that sit while you assemble the steering assembly. Attach the gearbox aside to the steering column and then attach the steering wheel. Now attach that unit to the support bar and insert the su uh, support bar into the frame and mount it in place. Attach the steering gear shaft in place now and run the linkage from the blower through the lower fuel rails and attach it to the inside pin on the support bar. Then attach the pedal linkage to the outside pin and to the pedal. Here's the steering linkage in place uh, in position on the car. This is a top view of that assembly so that you can see how the linkage and the steering wheels uh, all tie into each other. Now moving on to the wheels and since this is kind of a, a phantom or an amalgam paint job for uh, the Hawaiian Charger, uh, either way could be correct. The American racing style rims uh, had both all chrome fronts or the chrome and gunmetal design so on the backs he would make those either gold or chrome. So paint your rims however you want to and uh, um, I, the left is the rims and uh, the right uh, unit here is the uh, tires. Now note there's a nice set of centerline rims included on the chrome tree um, but they're too small for the tires and really no use for this build. So um, to rough up the tires and give them a realistic look uh, kind of roll the tread on some fine sandpaper while pressing down on it and then when, the, uh, when you're done with that insert the front rims into the front tires and the rear rims into the rear tires. And these tires are non-directional, so it doesn't matter uh, which way they are installed. Uh, I painted the uh, front rims with some gunmetal for the spokes to give them a more realistic look. I stripped the chrome from the rear wheels uh, with some bleach, uh, a bleach bath, and painted those with a gold tone. Now slide the rims onto the tires and line up the bead with the edges. Now grab these parts, uh, these are the caps uh, for the front axle covers and insert the spindle onto the front tire hub and attach the axle cover over the spindle. After all that you'll have a gorgeous looking front suspension unit complete. Now get out these parts for the rear suspension and grab your uh, tubing length template and we'll paint the brake hub steel, paint the brake line T-connector aluminum and paint the brake unit steel with gold brakes. Now paint the calipers gold but don't paint the axle. Now uh, we'll attach tube A to one side of the T and then tube B to the other side of the T and tube C to the end of the T. Now attach the axle to one hub and insert that into the brake unit. Attach the caliper to that sandwiching the hub in between. Now slide that assembly into the differential on the frame attaching the brake unit to the differential. Then attach the other brake unit to the differential. Now slide the remaining hub onto the axle and attach the caliper onto the brake sandwiching the hub as on the other side. Then attach tube A to the right brake and tube B to the left brake. And tube C runs along the frame to the front and is now left loose. Now here's a, sh this shows the assembly of the brakes onto the differential and then you can put the tires in place on the hubs to finish the rear assembly. So here is the underside of the chassis uh, frame at this point except for the panels. Here's your rolling chassis from a side view and aside from the final fuel line attachments and panels it's complete. This is uh, the instruction sheet information on how to attach fuel lines to the fuel valve. 
Um, so we're going, these are the lines that come off the tank and go to that. And we're going to cut the uh, black tubing about four inches, uh, although it says in instructions three and an eighth, but that's too short. So cut a length of gray tube at one and three eighths also. And the black tube runs from the fuel valve to the fuel cutoff lever. Then snake the tube under the header and through the hole in the engine plate. The gray tube goes from the fuel valve to the bottom pin on the fuel cell. I'll grab these panels and uh, final chassis assembly parts. And note that the skid plate panel there's, uh, has tra trademark scripts on it. So you'll want to remove these uh, with a blade and then some sandpaper. And then paint the fire extinguisher parts red and paint the master cylinder parts gold. And paint all the remaining panels flat black. To assemble the parts, attach the skid plate from the bottom and then assemble the master cylinder halves to the top. And on the right panel, install the brake handle and master cylinder and install the panel. The black tube goes on the pin on the master cylinder and install the left panel and the rear panel. Then attach the fire extinguisher halves onto the steering column. And note that the seat will sit on top of the panels once installed. Now set the chassis aside because it is complete. Now we're going to assemble uh, the rest of the body, but I'm going to do that in steps and I won't follow exactly through the instructions. Uh, but the final assembly will be done with finished parts. Now uh, we have the interior panels here for the body and they, those need to be painted aluminum and there is a trademark there also that needs to be removed from the rear panel prior to finishing so again shave it off with a blade and then sand it flat and remove all the release release pin marks on the parts too. Now here's some of those uh, heavy mold lines that I mentioned earlier um, so make sure you scrape these off and then sand them smooth with some fine grit sandpaper to get the body ready for prime Inside the body, uh, there's some trademark script in the front hood area. So once again, uh, shave it and uh, sand that smooth. And there are some ejector pin marks throughout the body on the inside. So where they would show uh, through the windows, you'll want to uh, fill those and sand them smooth. So get out these parts and paint the um, prop rods and the chutes uh, flat black. And then the, uh, the rear panels there, uh, they're going to be painted uh, with body color and some a foil trim added later. You can see here in the red circle um, that uh, part number 117 were some uh, shafts for body supports but I did not find these on my parts trees. Um, they were missing but I thought they were a good idea so I decided to make those later and I'll show you how. Also uh, as a side note those parts would have gone through the front grill and into the inner panel creating handles on the outside of the grill for lifting the body. Uh, so the real cars do not have these, so omitting those are that portion's correct in the building of a more accurate look. So once you've got all the body parts um, smoothed out and the ejector pin marks filled in, uh, use some real fine sandpaper and uh, wet sand the parts uh, to give them a good finish. Then prime all the parts inside and out. And once the primer is cured, Check it again for blemishes and then sand it again with uh, even finer sandpaper like 1000 grit. That will prepare the parts for final painting. Now these are the inner body panels and you'll paint those aluminum and get those ready for installation. They can be painted right on the sprue because those connections won't be seen. For the body, I wanted the interior of the body aluminum in color so um, I sprayed that aluminum. And then after it had dried, I taped it off on the inside uh, and then gave the exterior a final sanding and painted the main color on the body and the body panels. And this shows those panels after uh, the color coats have been painted. Now as this um, body requires a metallic paint, sometimes when you run that through an airbrush, um, you can get a buildup of flakes in the nozzle and that can uh, cause it to spit out some uh, paint on your paint job. Now just as a tip I usually would let that area set and if it's on an upper final coat just go back after the paint has cured sand the blemish out and then re you know then usually you can polish it out. Um, and because there's a lot of decals that cover blemishes you might be able to use those. Uh, if not 
you'd have to give it another spray coat but uh, it's important of course that the finished body is smooth uh, so the whole body has to be uh, sanded with about a 1500 grit and then make sure you don't break through the paint to smooth the top layers now we can decal the body and uh, start with the larger decals uh, and use plenty of warm water to position them and then uh, I would strongly suggest for longer and bigger decals that you use uh, the decal setting solutions available on the market. Now get the uh, painted back panels out and we're going to add some foil to uh, those units to replicate uh, a chrome trim. And uh, the foil of course is, is just like tape. You uh, cut out a section that fits the body parts you want to cover and then you stick it into place like tape and then trim off uh, the rest with a, a very sharp hobby knife and then burnish it in to all the corners and recesses uh, very tightly with either the end of uh, uh, a pencil eraser or um, a toothpick or, or any rounded object that won't tear the foil. Now there's also some decals that are applied over the top of your foil application in the front and the rear so uh, add those uh, just before we, we give it uh, clear coat of paint. Now we'll use those uh, inner panels painted aluminum earlier and install the cockpit shroud and the hinge panel into place. And uh, for the installed units you can see that here and at also you're going to want to install the shroud braces uh, at this time as well. As I mentioned earlier the frame braces were missing so I decided to make my own on using some 18 gauge craft wire and a scrap of plastic. I'm going to create that front brace for the support bars so uh, cut two lengths of wire to three inches and then measure out the distance between the holes in the front panel and then drill two small holes in the scrap part about one and an eighth inches apart or whatever you had measured there for yours. So you can see I painted the uh, scrap plastic a steel color here. Then insert the wires into the holes you drilled and bend them over 90 degrees to create a tab to hold them in place there. Now install the unit you made into the inside of the grill and line up the holes in the grill to the wires that you used on the scrap. Then super glue this into place. Install the front inner panel as you normally would have uh, by, and insert the wires into the holes uh, on the back panel as you install it. There will be some excess length there sticking through the holes. Once the glue has set, um, bend the wires on the inside of the back panel at a 90 degree and cut off some excess leaving enough to hold them into place. Now grab the window glass and I like to give them a thin crisp look so I dip them into some pledge floor polish, let the excess wick off and then dry and after that is done then run some uh, white glue around the perimeter of the outside window mounts and then you just lay the windows into place and this shows uh, those windows installed and as the glue dries it'll dry clear hiding the attachment of the window points. Now cut a piece of the black tubing about an inch and a half long and grab the chute assembly piece there and we'll uh, put the chute uh, back and the chute front together and attach that assembly to the rear bumper insert one end of the tube uh, into the chute and the other end into the hole in the lower rear fascia. Um, now for the final assembly slide the pins in the hinge panel into the rear frame mounts. Add the wheelie bars into place and here is a photo of the completed rear end. Here you install the frame braces with the body in the up position. Uh, you can see they're there in front of the engine just behind the front wheels. Here's what it looks like with the body down and the blower sticking out the hoods. All you'll have left uh, in your build for extra parts are the centerline rims and it appears that Ravel had to use a new tire supplier so they had to come up with some different wheels. So they were um, specifically produced to fit the new tires. Well there you have it. This is a terrific kit and I'd consider it a must have for anybody that likes to build funny car models. Now, the age of the moldings uh, were, were not really serious because there wasn't a lot of flash or blemishes. A few mold lines were easily fixed. The motor is uh, a lot to build, but it's a major portion of the build, so it d deserves the detail that they gave it. One thing is that the uh, tubing that they supplied 
is a little bit too small uh, for the pins so you either have to stretch the ends of those openings by putting something in there a little larger or by cutting off the mounting pins and using some uh, shortened uh, straight pins in their place. Um, the tubes and the ignition wires are pretty stiff to hold into shape so they might cause a little stress requiring a little extra super glue. The frame on the other hand was a breeze and just came together with no issues. Now there were uh, a few warped parts that needed a little extra tension but once glued into place they're just fine. The front suspension is a shaky spot but you'll need some experience and patience to put it together properly and as it's all chrome it kind of hangs in the front so you need to scrape off the chrome and assemble it right. The body was easy to work with and straight and usually on the bigger kits you have to use some microset and microsol type of products so I tried some raw ones uh, but and they kind of went into place but I used it uh, after I got them there just to be sure. The uh, fit on the body to frame is great and looks good when it's done and this is also a kit where uh, detailers and scratch builders can just go crazy. You could buy enough of these to build the entire stable of Hawaiian chargers and uh, that would make for quite a display. So buy one and get started. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel which you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks!